Melvin David Reese, born 1928, was a musician who studied at the University of Maryland. Melvin played the saxophone, the piano, and the clarinet with amazing skill, but he would drop out of college just before graduating so he could focus on his career playing at local jazz clubs in the D.C. area. It wasn't discovered until shortly after his 27th birthday that Melvin might not have been who he appeared to be on the surface. In 1955, Melvin attempted to abduct a 36-year-old woman by forcing her into his car. Luckily, she was able to escape or she most likely would have become his first victim. Melvin would be arrested on assault charges, but the woman later refused to press charges and Melvin was set free. On June 26, 1957, Margaret Harold and her boyfriend, a U.S. Army sergeant, were taking a trip near Annapolis, Maryland. During the drive, a green Chrysler sped up next to them and forced them off the road. The driver of the Chrysler was Melvin. After forcing them off the road, he got out of his vehicle and walked to the couple's car. He then motioned for them to roll down the window. It was at this time that he showed that he was armed, carrying a 38 revolver. Melvin demanded money and cigarettes from the couple, but this demand was refused. Melvin responded by shooting Margaret point-blank in the face. Her boyfriend was able to escape, and after making his way through several fields around a mile down the road, he finally found a farmhouse and was able to call the police. When investigators arrived at the scene, they found Margaret dead, naked, and she had been sexually assaulted. Close to the scene of the crime, police also noticed a construction building that appeared to have a basement window broken into and had been left open. When the police went inside, they were greeted with a sexual predator's collection of fantasies. Violent pornographic images and autopsy photos of female corpses had been taped to the wall. None of the women at the time could be identified with the exception of one yearbook photo of Wanda Tipton. Wanda Tipton had graduated in 1945 from the University of Maryland. Police located her, and when she was given a description of Melvin, a tall, dark-haired man, Wanda denied knowing anyone who fit the description, and from then on, the case went cold. On January 11th, 1959, nearly two years after Margaret Harold had been murdered, Carol and Mildred Jackson were driving home after visiting family in the Apple Grove area with their infant daughters. As they were driving home, the family seems to have just vanished. A relative who was also visiting was following the family only a few miles behind and came across a grisly discovery. The Jackson family car left abandoned on the side of the road. Police who first arrived noted that there were no signs of an accident or anything wrong with the vehicle. After searching inside the car, they didn't find any evidence of a struggle. It was like the family just vanished. A search was started, but not a single clue could be found to suggest what might have happened to the family, and yet again, the case went cold. Soon after the disappearance of the Jackson family was made public, a local couple came forward and they had a story of their own. On the same afternoon that the Jacksons had disappeared, they were also forced off the road. They claimed that a man driving a blue, older model Chevrolet got beside them and began acting erratically. He was flashing his lights on and off several times in rapid succession before he finally cut them off. He then forced them to stop on the side of the road. The driver of the blue Chevrolet then got out of the car and began walking towards theirs. The couple claims at this point they could sense something was wrong, so they threw the car in reverse and they escaped what surely would have been a gruesome fate. On March 4th, nearly three months after the Jackson family went missing, a horrible discovery was made. Two men clearing brush near Fredericksburg discovered the body of Carol Jackson lying face down in a ditch. According to the state of decomposition, the body had likely been there since the victim had gone missing. Carol's body was found face down with his hands tied behind his back. It was evident that he had been executed with a single bullet to the back of the head. When the coroner went to remove the body, a second victim was found. It was the Jackson's daughter, Janet, who was only 18 months old at the time of her disappearance. She had been thrown in the ditch while she was still alive and her dead father had been thrown on top of her. Janet's cause of death was suffocation from the weight of her father's body. On March 21st, Mildred and her daughter Susan's bodies were found near Annapolis in the woods. Both showed signs of torture and sexual assault, both pre- and post-mortem. Searching around the area where Mildred and Susan were found, the police came across a cinder block building. This was the same building they came across during the Margaret Harold murder. Inside the building, police discovered a red button. The button matched one that was missing from Mildred's dress, and police believed that Melvin brought his victims here shortly after they were abducted. Outside the building, police were able to get photos of fresh tire marks. It was noted that it appeared the killer had been returning back and forth to this building regularly. 
where this new information police believed whoever had killed Margaret Harold had also killed the Jackson family. An anonymous letter was sent to the Fredericksburg Police Department, and the writer claimed that he knew who the police should look into regarding the murders. Melvin Rees. The writer claimed that he and Melvin would often sit and talk philosophically about several different subjects, and a recent conversation they had was about murder, and if it would ever be considered acceptable. The writer had also said that Reese had confided in him that murder was just part of the human experience, and that he wanted to participate in that experience. Reese also told the writer that you can't say it's wrong to kill. Only individual standards make it right or wrong. But the most chilling detail of all was that the writer included a date for their conversation. January 10th, the day before the Jacksons were abducted. A short time later, the writer's identity would be revealed as Glenn Moser, a good friend of Melvin's. Moser told police that when he heard about the bodies being found of the Jackson family, along with when they initially went missing, he immediately suspected Melvin. According to Moser, he confronted his friend with a suspicion, and at that point, Melvin became very evasive. Shortly after this confrontation, Glenn wrote a letter to the police. In this letter, he also suspected that Melvin had killed a woman named Margaret Harold. After the letter was received, the police immediately went to speak with Rees, but he was in the wind. They searched all the jazz clubs he was known to play at and even went as far as to check with childhood friends, but no one had seen him. One clue they did get during the background check on Melvin was that he had attended the University of Maryland at the same time as Wanda Tipton, and the two had actually been romantically involved. The police then questioned Wanda again, and she confessed that she had lied about not knowing Melvin. She admitted that her and Melvin had been an item, and they were so until Reese told her that he was married. Now that just leaves me with one question. If she had told the truth, would the Jackson family still be here? Would they still have been met with such a terrible fate? Peter Herkos was a self-proclaimed psychic and he quickly became very involved with the case. He visited the Jackson family's final place of rest in Falls Church, Virginia, and was also allowed to handle some of their possessions. After doing so, he was able to provide in great detail the ways that they had all died and the ways that the bodies had been found. He then visited the site of Margaret Harold's murder and told investigators that they were indeed looking for the same killer, but what drew the most attention was that the psychic predicted that the case will be solved in the next two weeks and the killer is responsible for nine murders. Peter then took the police to a house. This house just so happened to belong to their main suspect in the murders, Melvin Reese. Melvin was then found to have packed up his home and skipped town to avoid being caught. At this point, the case had gone cold. Police had no way to locate Melvin and the families began to grow tired of their efforts. They were demanding justice for the deaths of their loved ones and they wanted it now. Things weren't looking good for solving the case until the writer of the anonymous letter, Glenn Moser, received a call from an old friend. Marvin Reese. Marvin told Glenn that he had moved to West Memphis, Arkansas and began working at a music store. He also told his old friend that he just needed a fresh start and had to get out of the city for a little while. Melvin was finally arrested and taken off the street with the help of Glenn's call. Police then searched his home in Arkansas and found several notebooks where Melvin wrote in detail what he had done to the Jackson family. Then at the trial, the boyfriend of Margaret Harold positively identified Melvin as the killer of Margaret. Ultimately, Rees was convicted in Maryland for the murder of Margaret Harold and would be sentenced to life in prison. He was then tried in Virginia for the murder of the Jackson family, and they gave him a death sentence. The death sentence would eventually be commuted to life in prison in 1972, and Melvin would later die of a heart attack in prison in 1995. When Reese was arrested in Arkansas, he was living with Pat Barrington, who was an exotic dancer turned actress. Pat had starred in the movie Orgy of the Dead. Given his history, it's been speculated by some that this was no coincidence, but rather a way for Melvin to remind himself of the horrific crimes he had committed just a few years earlier. 